So I've been spending quite a lot of time in my workshop working on small projects. Now the majority of stuff that I've made has been made out of reclaimed wood. And obviously every piece of wood that I've cut has needed a fair bit of sanding. And this machine is the machine that I've done the majority of my sanding on. So these are some of the projects that I've been working on. And as you can see, some of the projects, the smaller ones, are quite delicate. And sanding them has been an issue. A few times I've actually managed to grind a fraction of a millimetre off the end of my fingers when I've been sanding on the belt sander that I've just shown you. So, to cut a long story short, I've decided to buy a new sander. And for me, there were two criteria. I wanted something that I could sand caves fairly easily with, obviously for sanding the inside edges of something like this. But I also wanted something that I could sand smaller items with, a belt sander. So after a lot of research, I decided to go for this machine. It's a Triton 450 watt oscillating spindle and belt sander. So the model number is TSPST450. You can see it's got a 450 watt motor. The belt travels at 750 meters a minute. It's 2000 RPM, 58 oscillations per minute. Another important thing for me is that it comes with a three year guarantee. So the sander comes with a set of instructions, but they leave quite a lot to be desired, to be quite honest. So as well as a sanding belt, you've got five different sized sanding sleeves. Four of these have got their own rubber inserts and there's a convenient storage space for everything on this machine. So those four have all got rubber drums. The last one, you might find confusion if you buy this machine. That one's designed to actually just fit on the spindle. So to fit the sanding belt, just slide it down over the spindle. There's a little location lug down here for this pin to slot into. So I just slide it down until it drops in place. There's a washer provided that just slips in there and then we use this nailed knob to hold it down. So just tighten that down. The unit also comes with a little fence to use with the sanding belt. Again, stored on the unit itself is a little wing nut to attach that to the table. Just clamp that down and then you've got something to rest your workpiece against. There are five size drums, two inch, one and a half inch, one inch, three quarter inch and half inch. The on off buttons positioned at the front, nice and easy to get to, no issues there. And then another feature of this particular sander is the fact that it's got a tilting table. If I spin it around so you can see what's going on, there's a little spring there with an indentation and you can position the table at just about any angle you want, but it's got preset indents at 15 degrees, 22 and a half degrees, 30 degrees and 45 degrees. So that's down at 45 degrees. That gives you the ability to sand 45 degree chamfers on whatever workpiece you're using. <coughs> Lifting it back up is a bit easier. And there are clamps on both sides of the machine to clamp that back down again. It's an aluminium table, reasonably solid. I've got no issues with that at all. So if you look on the right hand side of the machine, you can see there's a place to store the fence for the belt sander. This nut is a nut that is used to attach the sanding drums. Two of the inserts for the sanding drums. If we go around to the back of the unit, this is the insert that we use for when we're using the sanding drums. But we can remove the belt and just pop that in there, one or the other. And then the washer that goes on the top of the belt and the nailed knob just slide in there. On the left hand side we've got the other three insets for the sanding drums. This is the tool that we use to tighten up the sanding drums on the spindle. This is used to attach this fence. Obviously the other knob there for clamping the table in position and these have got a lovely rubber grip on them. So also on the left hand side we've got a dust extraction port. Luckily for me my shop vac just slots straight in there. And then on the front as well as these five sleeves we've got the two washers that are used to secure these onto the spindle. So I'll go through the process of fitting one of the drums. Select which size you want, this is a one inch. Pop it down over the spindle, select the appropriate washer and then on the back right hand side I've got the silver nut stored. Just shove that down hand tight, take the spanner from the left hand side of the machine, hold on to the drum and just tighten it up. Got to put the insert in, so each one of these drums has got the zero insert, push that in got perforations there for dust extraction and as you can hear it's not quiet it's not quiet but it's not too loud either 
So if I check the spindle for vertical, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good as well. So I've got no issues with the way it sands, it sands lovely. Uh, let's have a look and see what it's like with a dust extractor on. Yeah, so the dust extraction is very effective. Couldn't see any dust at all once I'd started the shop back. Then there's a washer to fit on the top and this little knurled knob holds it all in place. So that's without dust extraction and I'll demonstrate how to adjust the tracking of the belt with this while it's running as well. Now that is very effective sanding and quite aggressive, it's an 80 grit sheet on there. Let's try it uh, down at 45 and see what that's like. Just put the dust extractor back on. <laughs> Yeah, that is very effective. So the fact that you can tilt this table gives you a lot more possibilities compared to a normal spindle sander and belt sander. I know you can do that with a belt sander, but this is a lot easier. Now Triton also sell a dedicated drum sander with a fixed cast iron table at the top. It doesn't have the belt, but it comes with an extra drum. It goes up to three inches instead of two inches. Now one thing that I must point out is that the thick end of this belt sander is three inches. So you've got half a three inch drum there, but the problem with that is that you can only sort of sand a semicircle. You can't actually slide something over it and go around. And the other thing is I bought some spare sanding sleeves for these and they always come with six. The biggest one always been three inches, which is absolutely no use on this machine at all. So I got to thinking and I had a look online and you can actually buy the rubber drums as spares so for just over 13 UK pounds I've purchased the three inch drum it actually fits on the spindle with no issues the only problem is that the inset won't work so I'm going to just make an insert for this Actually, <laughs> that's just about perfect. So now that means I can put my three inch sanding drum on and sand as normal. The Triton 450 watt oscillating spindle and belt sander. Now I think this is a smashing machine. Love the fact that you can tilt the table for sanding at angles. I do think that if you're thinking about buying one of these, you should spend the extra money and go for the three inch drum and make an insert because it's going to give you far more versatility and you're not going to be wasting money every time you buy another set of sleeves. Dust extraction for me is very important and that is phenomenal on this thing. It does a brilliant job. Is it worth the money? Yes, I think it is worth the money. I'm very pleased I've got it. It's going to make a lot of things a lot easier for me. I've got far more control when I'm using this. It's a lot easier to actually have the belt vertical rather than horizontal and holding the wood against it while it's sanding is a lot easier. I do appreciate that I should use a fence but I tend not to do that because it stops you from being able to slide the workpiece along the length of the belt sander. The drum sander part of it is something that I've been wanting for many years. Anyway I hope you found this review useful and thank you for watching.